Patience pays off for the Boston Celtics. They run away late. They blow the doors off the Dallas Mavericks, even though this was close in the third quarter. I'll talk about it right now on a bonus Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day. I've got you covered every single day, Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts like today when they play on a Friday night, when they play on a Saturday night. I'll give you a bonus podcast, so make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Audio-wise, everywhere podcasts exist, open up your favorite podcasting app and subscribe. Whatever you did to find it this time around. And if you're want to, if you want to watch it on YouTube, go ahead, watch it on YouTube, subscribe there, ring the bell, get notified when I drop a new video, hop in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the Boston Celtics beating the Dallas Mavericks 138, 110. And this turned into a huge blowout, but it wasn't a blowout until the fourth quarter. Uh, the Celtics were only up two with six, basically six minutes to go in the third quarter. So halfway through the third quarter, they had given up all of a, at that point, I think the biggest lead was 12, 13 and all but two points had gone away. And it it looked like this was going to be a a fight to the end. It just, the entire game felt like, but you know, Boston went up 10, 12, the Mavericks would cut it. Uh, they get to the rim very easily. The second chance points. Luca would find somebody. Luca would make a crazy shot. Uh, Luca is able to dominate a game without being the most athletic guy on the floor. Uh, it just it's just kind of wild how he is just crafty. And he finished look triple double, thirty seven points, twelve rebounds, eleven assists. But he was also a minus twenty on the night. So interesting that he has this big monster game, but they lost the minutes he was on the floor by a lot. Uh, ultimately, I think the story of this game for the Celtics is patience. Patience pays off. And I think this is going to be the story of Tatum and Brown, the, the turnaround their their next, uh, this next chapter, this actually, I don't even know if we want to say next chapter or whatever, but the story of Tatum and Brown has always been. They're great. They do a lot of great things, but when it matters most, they won't be patient. They will do too much. Tatum will drive into the teeth of the defense, get too deep and turn it over. Jalen, same thing. And that's what we saw. That's what we saw in the finals two seasons ago. That's what we saw how Miami defends the Celtics, generally speaking, before this season. I wrote about it. I've talked about it. It, it, They lay traps for... The Celtics, they lay traps for Jalen and Jason, and they just suck them in. It's just like a Venus fly trap where they kind of bait them with open open lanes, but then there's like late help, and uh, this this has been how they would defend them and, and take away their, their passing options and get them to turn the ball over because they, they wouldn't have the patience to stick with the game plan. But now, whether it's maturity, whether it's the new teammates, whether it's uh, a coaching staff uh, that's more experienced, maybe a combination of all of those things, the Celtics are able to be patient. The Celtics are able to kind of roll with a game like this where it's, like I said, up 10, up four. Up 12, up five, up, you know, back and forth where you're not quite pulling away. Dallas is hanging around. It felt like that third quarter run when they got it down to two might have flipped last year and years past. The game might have flipped at that point. And 
who knows how the game would have gone, but we've seen what Dallas has done. We've seen what Luka has done with lesser talent to Boston. And he has this kind of force of nature kind of thing to him. And the Celtics never gave into that. The Celtics never took their, well, I shouldn't say never, but the little forays outside of the game plan were immediately kind of refocused, right? There's a, there's a play in the third quarter where Jason Tatum dribbles out the shot clock, basically the whole shot clock trying to ISO and he get fires up a bad shot. And that was exactly what you don't want the Celtics to do. The third quarter, I think they started out playing a little too slow. Uh, it, it felt like early on that they were, look, the Celtics were, were playing well offensively. They just weren't playing great defensively in the first half. And in the third quarter, they slowed down. Tatum uh, was, was trying to do a little too much. I think he was looking for his offense. And the funny thing is that he found his offense after he stopped looking for it. Um, they, they started to flow through Porzingis and move the ball. They took the ball out of Tatum's hands to start the, the, the possessions. They put it into holiday and, uh, white's hands and they, they kind of flowed through Porzingis and Porzingis got some shots, but then ultimately the ball got to Tatum. It goes into one of my favorite things to say in the, in, you know, when it comes to basketball, you play the right way, the right guys get the right stats. It's it's a golden rule of basketball. It's you just if everybody plays the right way, the rebounders will rebound, the passers will pass, and the shooters will shoot. That's how it always goes because everybody knows what everybody's strengths are. So it's not like the non-shooters are going to sit there and be like, "Oh, I've got hey, I got the ball now. Look at me, I'm going to go shoot all the time." No, they they are if you play the right way. The right guys get the right stats and the right guys got the right stats because the Celtics played the right way in this game. And ultimately 32 points for Tatum, 25 points for Jalen, 24 for Porzingis. This is how it's supposed to go, right? This is your star power at work. 32 for Tatum on 52 and a half, 55 and a half, 100 shooting splits. So 52.5% 52.5% field goal, 55.5% from three, 100% from the line, seven of seven. Eight rebounds, three assists. He had four turnovers. All of those in the first half. Tail of two halves for Jason Tatum. But he figured it out. He got away from, he had that brief uh, kind of uh, getting away from the plan, but they stuck with it, the patience. They ended up going back to it, and they ultimately found the the weak spots, right? They found the weak spots in the Dallas defense. They found the the place where they could break through. And and look, the Mavs are, you know, at the end of a road trip, third game in four nights, I believe. Uh they all you had to do was keep the pressure on towards the end and and there was a good chance that a fourth quarter like this was going to happen. You didn't have to do it in the first quarter. You didn't have to do it in the second quarter. You just had to keep the pressure on and don't get away from the game plan. Because they've got so much firepower, guys can wait. And you have these gap fillers, Holiday, White, Horford, 13 points for White, 12 for Horford, 11 for Holiday. The the combination of those three was uh, pretty great. They combined to put up 36 points, 17 rebounds, 18 assists, five blocks, and three steals. And in very specific times in the game, they each had their moments. Uh, Holiday had some early moments. Uh, Incredible corner three-pointer. Like, I seriously felt like they were testing the limits of his corner three-point shooting. He's the best corner three-point shooter in the league, and they got one to him fading away on the right side with his right hand and he shot it from behind the backboard and all net. It was unbelievable. He ended up halfway up the tunnel for God's sake. So Holiday, three of three from the, the three-point line, filling gaps early. Derek White in the fourth quarter. Al Horford, big block shots in the fourth quarter in the in the the kill shot at the end where it was in the fourth 
and he hits that three pointer and then he just waves his arms. He's like, that's it. It's over. That was, that was the kill shot. And it's so funny. Al Horford's, you know, he's, he's so nice and unassuming. That dude's a killer, man. That dude, he, he loves to win, hates to lose. He's as competitive as it gets. You people get fooled because he's like, you know, quiet and professional and he, you know, so, you know just a family man. He's got every, he's got everything going for him. He ticks all the boxes. He's just the most professional, nicest guy in the world. And, but he, that dude's a stone killer, man. Uh, but anyway, those three guys filled in gaps until the stars can do their thing. That's the beauty of this team. That's why the patience thing is so easy for them. You don't have to worry about, uh, oh, the Mavs are getting close. Not a problem. Just stick with it. Don't worry about it. That patience, it leads to good things. People don't understand. I, okay, so I spent like 20 years in the television business. I sit here. I have looked at more clocks with hours, minutes, and seconds ticking off than anybody should ever look at in their life. Everybody looks at a clock and you go, oh, it's three in the morning. Uh, I'm looking at 3, 17, and uh, 12, 13, 14. Like, I'm just, it's I, every second of every minute I see. And I, when I was, when you're in television, you know, you've got, oh, this story, I've got 30 seconds. You got to go on at a certain time. When I was producing a newscast, at six, we went on at five fifty-eight thirty, and you had to be ready. You can't say, "Well, just give me a couple minutes." Five fifty-eight thirty is when you went on, and you had to be off at six twenty-six thirty, and those non-negotiable. And so you learn the power of each second, and like in basketball. You have 0.3 seconds. You can get a, you can catch and shoot in 0.3. That's a third of a second. And that's plenty of time if you need a shot to catch and shoot. So if you have 0.8 seconds, you can actually get, get a dribble in and shoot. So you string enough of those together. Oh, you've got a few seconds left. There's, there's time. There's time. You string a few of those together, you got minutes, minutes. We got plenty of, you got a couple minutes left, plenty of time. The Celtics had their lead cut to two with 18 minutes to go. So much time. If you, if you understand how much time there is in a second, you know, thousand one, there's a lot that can be done in a basketball game in thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. Like those, there's a lot of time there to get stuff done. And when you have minutes left, you just, you just keep sticking with it. And that patience leads to confidence because if you've got the confidence in the, in the game plan and your teammates and everything, and you've got the patience, to just let it happen. Don't worry about it. You've got time. 18 minutes is an eternity. But if you had eight minutes, if you had four minutes, time, you have plenty of time. This is what I've wanted from the Celtics for so long. Just relax. Have that confidence. We talk about the Warriors. They play the Warriors on Sunday. The Warriors have the ultimate co uh, confidence. They have patience. They know how much time they have. Now, within that being patient doesn't mean slow, but they are patient enough. They know just you got Steph, you got Clay, you've got guys that can do it. They've always been patient. Doesn't matter how much you're up. Don't worry about it. We got it. We got time. Cuz you know what you're capable of. And this Celtics team knows what they're capable of cuz you've got Tatum, Brown, Porzingis, you've got White, Holiday and Horford. Any one of those guys, any one of those guys can drop 20 on any given night. It's not it's not unheard of, right? Any one of those guys can drop 30. Any one of those guys can have a big game. It doesn't have to be Tatum. It doesn't have to be Brown. Tatum said uh, an amazing thing after the game, and this is this is where 
it really like, I feel like these guys really start to get it. Tatum talked about the window saying we all have to sacrifice something. And I think just understanding this window that we have with this team is very unique. That, that simple quote, understanding this window that we have with this team is very unique, says it all because they get it. They understand this is, you don't have these opportunities very often. Tam's about to turn 26. He's been through a lot. He's been deep into the playoffs. He's been to the finals. He has seen a lot of teams. He gets it. This window that we have with this team is very unique. Don't screw it up by going off on your own tangents. Don't screw it up by being impatient. Just stick with the plan. The hardest thing, I've said this before, the hardest thing for an NBA team to be is all on the same page. To have 14, 15 guys all working towards the same goal because it's the NBA, it's a job. These guys all have their own motivations. So to have everybody working towards the same goal, to be sacrificing, to not worry about their own numbers as much as the team goal, To have that patience to perform and perform well and understand that there's plenty of time in a game. 48 minutes is a long time. There's a lot of basketball. To understand that whatever it takes, is today a Porzingis game? Great. Is today a Derek White game? Great. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But if you play the right way enough, the right guys are going to get the right stats. And you're going to get stats like tonight where Jason has 30 and Jalen has 25 pretty close and Porzingis is right there. And all the other guys have somewhere in the teens-ish. And it all just kind of adds up to a big, a big night. And if you can get that and defend and get back on defense and rebound, then you have a game like this that even if it's close at some point, it takes off. Um, so I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This is a, this, this win, this stretch, the way they've approached these games. This is, this is special. I don't want to overreact. I don't want to overreact. I hope I'm treating it appropriately. This is not how this team has acted in the past. This win over Dallas is indicative of something. I don't want to go overboard with it, but it's the mentality. It's not how, it's not what, it's the the thought process. It's the, it, it's the process of being patient and sticking with the plan. That's what's impressive to me. I don't care about shots going in or not going in. The approach is there. Uh, we saw Xavier Tillman. He had good minutes. I thought he had, you know, he played 15 minutes, not perfect minutes for sure, but, uh, he was a plus 13 in 15 minutes. He was on the floor for some good stretches and he did some good things. He had a couple of assists. Uh, he had one where, uh, he lobbed it up to Al Horford and like, he got the ball in the middle of the lane and he, he wasn't sure what to do. And he saw Al and it was like a little late and it was a little off, but he got it there. Uh, he also kind of served as like a, a relay man, like hit the cutoff man in a, in a, like in a baseball game where Horford was doubled in the post and Tillman got underneath the basket and he turned and fired it to the corner for a corner three. Uh, that was very, like, like I said, it's like very much like hitting the cutoff man and, and throwing somebody out. Uh, he made some good plays. He played some good defense. Uh, I, I saw little glimpses in Tillman that, Hey, here's a guy that can give you exactly what he gave you here. 15 minutes, six points, a couple of assists, a rebound, uh, a blocked shot. That's, this is what they got Tillman for this type of performance. So I think it's promising before the game. I wrote in my preview on Boston sports journal, the, did I introduce myself at all at the beginning of this? 
Uh, I didn't, <laughs> but you know who I am by now. You probably read the description, but anyway, I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston sports journal. I always screw something up in my intro when, when I'm doing these bonus podcasts. I don't know what, I don't know why, but maybe it's because my brain is fried from, this is my sixth podcast of the week. Uh, but in my preview, I said, I'd love to see Tillman at the start of the second quarter with Al Horford. I didn't expect, I, did, I honestly, I was like more hopeful than anything. And there he was to start the second quarter with Al Horford. So uh, it was good to see him get those minutes. These are important minutes that he needs them. He said after the game that he wants them and, and they're helpful. So get him these minutes in these spots so he can learn how to play with these guys. So overall, um, look, the Celtics, not the best first half, uh, but sticking with it, like I said a million times in this show already, if this is how they're going to play, if they're not going to overreact when teams make runs and they're going to stick with it and be patient and, and understand that they have a huge run in there somewhere because they're too good not to, then they're going to be, this is, I've said this is a championship team. I've said it before. This is a championship level team. This is a champion. We're looking at a championship team right here. I'm telling you. Now, obviously, things can change. You still have to go out there and do it and win it. But this team, with this level of talent, with this mentality, everything, everything is there. All of the, everything is there. They obviously have to win playoff series, and who knows how that's going to go. But everything is there. It's all right there for them. They're, they're playing the right way. They're thinking the right way. They're approaching things the right way. The coaching is there. The players are there. The talent is there. Cohesion, chemistry, locker room, vibes. It's all there. It's all there. So enjoy the run. I want to thank everybody for uh, checking out this podcast here, the bonus podcast. Uh, it's a Monday through Friday show, so make sure you're checking me out Monday through Friday. If you're new and you're still here, make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, hi. Uh, hop in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Uh, am I right? Am I wrong? You tell me. And then I would love it if you shared the podcast. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.